Key to Clinton, do you need progesterone if you've had an ablation and have no lining? Yes. Um, so an ablation, first of all, it doesn't completely take away the entire uterine lining. Um, it takes away enough of it that for most people, they have little or no bleeding. Um, ablations are, are great for women that have bad, bad periods and bad bleeding. Um, but you know, it's interesting. If you look at people that have had ablation, about 80% of them are satisfied with the outcome of their ablation, but only about a third of them have no bleeding, which means there's still some endometrium there, even though it's been ablated because it doesn't actually wipe out the entire endometrial level. So um, you can still get an endometrial cancer after ablation. And honestly, that's one of the things. So I'm old enough to be around before we really had ablations. They had some things that we tried that didn't work well, but the modern ablations, um, you know, they came out actually when I was in practice. And one of the concerns that we all had was, gee, are we going to miss uterine cancer? Um, and I don't think that answer has been, um, I don't think that question has been completely answered yet. Um, ablation is a great thing. Um, I, I do them, most of us do them, you know, but there is that little question mark. And, and the thing with uterine cancer, the good news about uterine cancer is that we tend to find it really early. And so we can treat it when it's still treatable and women tend to do well after a uterine cancer. But the reason that is, is because women have bleeding and then people don't like bleeding. So they come to the doctor and then the doctor says, hmm, better make sure this isn't from a pre-cancer or a cancer. And we figure it out either before it's a cancer or when it's really early. That's as opposed to say ovarian cancer, which has really no symptoms for most people until it's almost too late. And so ovarian cancers, they tend, women with ovarian cancers tend to have a much harder time and don't do as well as women with uterine cancers. And the reason is because uterine cancers present early because of the bleeding. That was one of the things that we were always a little worried about with ablations. Like, gee, are we going to be covering up this bleeding? And so women are going to have cancers. We're going to turn uterine cancers into ovarian cancers as far as survival rate and how bad they are. And, you know, we haven't seen that too badly, which is fortunate. And it's probably because, and I, you know, I haven't seen data for this, but it's possible that because we are getting rid of a lot of that endometrium, we don't see as many uterine cancers after ablation. I don't know for sure whether that's true or not. I haven't seen data for it, but it does make some sense. But on the other hand, it doesn't mean you can't get an endometrial cancer because there's still some endometrial cells there. So it's really important to still be on progesterone with estrogen um, because even though you don't have enough endometrium to cause bleeding problems, there's still cells there that can be stimulated and cause a problem. Um, and that's, you know, again, safety first. Um, you know, if I take away your hot flashes, but give you cancer, I haven't done you any good. So that's something that, you know, it's just, you don't want to mess with. Um, and so, yes, I would not feel comfortable prescribing estrogen without progesterone in somebody that still has a uterus but had an ablation. And that's the reason for it. I'm very conservative when it comes to patient safety. Um, again, my primary responsibility is your health, and I take that seriously. So I really want to make you feel better. Um, but if I have to say, I'm sorry, I can't make you feel better because it's too dangerous, I'll, I'll tell you that. Um, I sometimes tease my my uh, pregnant patients that, uh, you know, number one, keep you healthy. Number two, keep your baby healthy. Number three, give you a good experience. But you know what, if I have to piss you off to keep you or your baby healthy, I'm going to do that. <laughs> so, and sometimes it comes down to that. Um, and it's the same thing here. Keeping you healthy is more important than anything else. Um, so I wouldn't take that risk.